Slim 4 Authentication Lesson 19. Setting up our session the right way. So, to get started today, we are going to go and set up a new HTTP session within our foundation. So we're going to go right here. We're going to add our own session class. Now within this session, we want to extend from the symphony session. And to do that, we need to use the symphony component HTTP foundation session session as symphony session. And then we're simply going to say extend symphony session. And good to go. After that, we're going to go to our bootstrappers and we're going to add a new bootstrapper and we're going to call it load session. This is of course going to extend the other bootstrappers or extend the other bootstrapper. And then we're going to say public function base. And then within this boot, we're going to simply start our new session. We're going to say session equals new session import that from our foundation HTTP session that extends symphony. Then we're going to do session start. And then we're going to say this app bind session class with the session. Oh, I'm missing a colon. There we go. Nope. Session colon colon class. There we go. Okay. After that's done, we need to register the session to our HTTP kernel. And we're going to load our session as our very first item. That's going to be our very first loader, load session. When we're done with that, we're going to actually have to go to public and then index. And we have session start here. We need to remove this. We're using Symphony to start our session now. If we try to set it with vanilla PHP, we will air out. So we, uh, we're going to remove that. After that, we're going to add a global helper function. This helper function is just going to be like our validator and honestly several other helpers we've had at this point that uh, lets us just interact with our session in a cleaner way. We're going to say if no session function exists, then create the session function. It's going to have two parameters. It's going to have key, which is false, and value, which is false by default. Then we're going to resolve the session from our container. We're going to say resolve boot and then it's going to be foundation HTTP and then session class. After that, we're going to say if there is no key, then just return the session. If there is no value, then we're going to return the session, but we'll get the key. And finally, if there is a key and a value, we'll say session set key and value. Then we'll return our session. All right. Once that is set up, we're going to go back to our HTTP um, login controller. And we're going to test this out. I say if validator fails, we're going to say session using the global helper function. And then we're going to say errors equals validator errors. Just like that. But we need to force ourselves to fail. And so how do we do that? Well, we can just do what we did in the last video of this series. We can just say form will fail. And then we can just do will fail is required. Obviously, we're not passing through that field, so we will fail. Um, and then the only other thing I can think of is we actually need to do errors 
get messages just like that all right so now we'll die and dump our session errors and we'll see if we get the same thing if we get the proper failed form let's fill that out invalid csrf storage use session start before initiating the guard middleware or provide array storage hmm so it looks like we never actually started our session so if we go back to our load session bootstrapper here's the reason we called the function base instead of boot so if we rename the function back to boot and then we reload our page it works all right so now let's see if our session gives us the right information whoops whoops exception error exception message undefined index will fail okay so now we're getting somewhere so now if we go to login controller and we do form will fail and then we set this to null just like that now let's try to reload that page there we go will failed is required field now this looks just like the last video but check this out in our login controller we're dying dumping the session errors we're not just getting the validator error messages we're getting the session errors so if we're able to say like redirect the user back to the last page then we can use the session to show the user the given errors they have so let's do that let's create a global helpers function and this is going to be back like redirect back we're going to say if no function exists back then function back we're just going to say route equals app resolve app support request input class so that's just our route context that we we get all this stuff from our route context and the route context middleware and uh, that resolves the context from our current route so we can get the route current URI from that and then we can say return redirect which we already have and back so back to the current URI just like that so now let's go and try that again and before we do that let's go into the login controller okay so now we're setting our session errors and then we're returning the user back to which they came so let's try this all right we successfully got redirected back but we don't have any context we don't have any errors we're showing the user so let's do this let's go to login dot blade dot php and let's just see if we can do at json session and then it's session errors so session errors and let's see if that outputs the proper information and there we go will fail will fail is a required field so if we go and we add more information and let's go to our login blade real quick and we're going to remove this required and then we're going to remove the type we're going to take care of the validation on the back end um, it's not bad to do it on the front end as well but while we're trying to build out our validation is kind of annoying so if we reload our page and we try this again will fail and password then if we add a password and don't have an email we get email is a required field will fail if we add an email but it's not an actual email we just add a value because it's required then we get email must be an email will fail is a required field password is a required field so guys that is setting up a session and passing the failed validation messages to the front end uh, in the next lesson we will start flashing data or information to the front end based on a single request so after you get redirected back if you go to a different page without passing validation the request 
or the validation errors won't stick in our session. Simple